So kind of here's how it goes. You get up early in the morning, you're going to get out, you're going to mow the yard. So on the nice, cool morning, you can get up, go mow the yard, get everything done before it gets hot, and then get on with your life and go do something else. And then this happens. So, now what are you going to do? So you start going through the list. You check the spark. Okay, yep. Spark plug and everything's fine. Check the fuel filter. Yep, fuel filter's not clogged. It's fine. Just go ahead and throw a new one on there. Dang, thing still won't start. So then you get to number three. You know the motor's good, so you need compression, fuel, and spark. And you have two of those things that only leaves fuel. So then you find out, after removing the fuel line, the fuel pump's not doing anything it's not moving any fuel whatsoever. So you're left with a couple of options. You A, replace the fuel mechanical fuel pump that you just replaced last summer in hopes of getting another two months out of it just to get you to fall. Or you try and put a vacuum one on there and try and figure out how to get that to work and then have problems with it again later down the road. Or you go with a much more expensive but more reliable system that we're going to talk about here in a sec. Okay, so this John Deere, I believe it's a 2002 L110 automatic, overall a fairly decent mower, but for about the past three years it's had one major problem with it, and that is the mechanical fuel pump that these Kohler engines come with. So here's the fuel pump, and it's just the biggest POS I've ever seen in my life, because they're incredibly simple, but once the original one goes out, I don't know. I mean, this was this was supposed to be a better one. I think we spent forty-five or forty-nine dollars on this thing, and that was last summer that we replaced it, and now it's dead again. So, gone through too many of these. Not messing with them. I didn't want to mess with the vacuum ones because, frankly, I don't really like those. I've had uh, whatever neighbors tractors and whatnot that I've had problems with those. So, I took it up a step. What's going on here? Factory fuel line, new fuel filter. Runs up to here, the fuel filter. This is a electric fuel pump. Uh, da -da. 2 to 3.5 PSI, 28 gallons per hour. And this I just bought from Advanced Auto along with the fuel line, the regulator, and all that crap. <clears throat> and so basically, it pulls fuel. The pump pressurizes this line, this line, and this line. This line runs to the carburetor. This is a T. I had to just get all this stuff from Lowe's. But this line here runs down to the regulator. And this regulator here, you can set it. It's set at 1, which is more than enough for this thing, or it runs all the way up to 6. But for the sake of not stressing out the pump, I just leave it on 1. And then this line runs all the way back down to the tank. And goes back in there. There's actually a, I drilled a hole, put a threaded fitting in there, and then put JB Weld all around it just to make sure it didn't come out. But the fitting itself didn't seem to leak. So this was actually a very easy, very simple install. It just cost a little bit of money. Honestly, you could probably cut $30, $40 off of the $100 or so that I spent on this if you just bought the stuff online. But it was a really easy install. So... Fuel, let's start with the fuel pump. This is just a piece of line that I had to buy. I think I had to buy, I think 10 feet total, just because I messed up a couple of times. That seemed, I think that's about what I bought of this uh, quarter inch fuel line. So this is tied in right here to the ignition plug, and it's tied into one of these yellow wires. Just use a voltmeter uh, on ohms so you can check to see if there's a connection being made and there's a connection being made both on lights and running you can hear that so that's how I got that the power for the uh, fuel pump just on the ignition and cranking ground is hooked up there that's self-explanatory runs up to this T this I don't know what this hole was here for but I uh, 
used it to mount the regulator there just so it's out of the way and easy hood doesn't hit it this just piece of scrap metal this is actually uh, the part that would go on a gate or a latch like that that I cut in half to hold the fuel line and then it runs down to the carburetor so apart from right there which I probably need to put a hose clamp on it I hose clamped all this stuff because now there's a lot of potential for a lot more pressure in this system than there was before with the crap mechanical fuel pump. But if you're going to do a system like this, regardless of what kind of electric pump you have, unless it is just an absolutely puny little thing, you're going to have to have a return because this is rated for a car. So let's just say hypothetically that you could run a 250 horsepower V8 with carburetor with this fuel pump. That's how much fuel, theoretically, this thing could probably supply. And here you're running a 17.5 horse single cylinder lawnmower. Well, it's gonna, it's, the flow is what's gonna create the pressure. It's gonna be trying to flow all of that 28 gallons per hour into that carburetor, and you're gonna end up with either overpressurizing a line and blowing a line off, straining the pump causing a failure or the uh, float isn't going to have enough oomph and you're going to end up breaking some of the carburetor sinking the float and then flooding the engine really bad so it's just better you, you just have to have a return of some kind so it goes into this t it pressurizes this whole side to whatever the regulator is set at in this setup so once it reaches the in this case one psi Regulator's going to open and it's going to run it back to the tank. So I'm going to turn the fuel pump on. We come back here, the gas tank. You can see there's gas flow. So that's the return. That is how much gas is having to be returned because the motor currently isn't using it. And it's pretty much just exactly the same whenever it's running because these small motors don't use a whole lot of gas like a car would. So that's pretty much what I had to do there. Haven't had any problems with it whatsoever. And really the only weak link in this whole system, other than that one clamp I need to replace, is the fuel pump going bad. And even if the fuel pump goes bad, which in this situation running low PSI, this pump should last, well I know, I know for a fact it's just, it, it can't last any shorter than this piece of crap here did. So this is what I did to fix this problem. Thus far it's worked pretty good, and hopefully it'll work good for a really long time.